Now it's fair to say I'm a massive fan of the TaylorMade P790s, both old and new. And in terms of this year, I think the P790s are probably one of the best irons out there in general for the average golfer. They took a hike in price, but we've got a P790 Ti. That's took a bit of a hike in price. What are we paying for? Is it worth paying for? And what happens when they're in the hands of the average golfer? Time to find out, I think. So let's start off with what a TaylorMade saying. What is the TaylorMade P790 Ti? Well, Ti is obviously titanium. This is the first hollow body construction that is wholly made of titanium. So it's revolutionary, but what does it mean? Well, what it means is ultra lightweight. It means that inside of that body, as well as the speed foam, which we've seen in P790 and a lot of the TM products, we've also got a lot of tungsten weighting and I mean a lot of tungsten weighting and the idea is that's going to give us plenty of assistance in getting that ball airborne getting some ball speeds across that club face giving the forgiveness and the assistance that an average golfer wants all sounds perfect but it does come with a bit of a catch right so before we get talking about what is the catch exactly and I think we probably know what it is um, this channel we look at we, we, we review product based on its merits first and foremost and we'll discuss the catch after um, so we'll start off with how this thing looks. Image is up on screen for you now. I think on the shelf uh, we've got a fairly matte, uh, almost dull finish in terms of the overall body. And we've got the dark grey, sort of tungsten uh, colour. Uh, I don't know what you refer to that as. I'm kind of like, I, I'll say I'm on the fence in terms of looks. If I'm being perfectly honest, I prefer the standard P790. And I always say this, whether or not it's just a bit of shiny, a bit of chrome, I don't know. Uh, I can see people liking it, but it doesn't do anything great for me personally. But anyway, like I said, that's a personal thing. More interesting in how this thing sits addressed behind the ball. And one thing I do like that they've done here is they've made effectively um, what they're saying is a game improvement iron packed into a body of perhaps a, uh, a player's iron, or very, very similar to that of the P790. They've done that reasonably well. It is, uh, as I've read, slightly bigger at the, uh, at the toe end uh, in terms, I think, of the height of the toe. But the overall profile front to back, um, whilst being, again, slightly longer, is nothing major. And the club's head-to-head, -head in I'm referring to the P790 now, there's very little to split them at all. And the offset, again, is at the 7-iron that I've got in my hand. It's, it's not a great deal there. So I think he's done a really good job there. The one thing that, again has still not been achieved and there's been no effort in this one really to do it is the top line is very pronounced it's definitely there there's been no effort to sort of sham for the edge which a lot of people have done to give that perception at least of that top line being a little bit thinner um so for me it kind of um that top line would be a bit of an issue it has got some mass there that i'm not particularly keen on um so again Overall, on the looks department, it's not ticking boxes for me on a personal level, like I said, uh, because of A, the top line, and because of B, like I said, the overall sort of visual appearance of it. But like I said, that's a personal thing. I'm interested in performance, and that's what we're going to do next. I'll hit some balls, uh, as ever, and we'll look at overall performance, what this thing's doing. But before I do that, one point to mention is how this thing is lofted. So again, it's a super strong loft in terms of, I think it's 28 and a half degrees, on the uh, seven iron. And I think if you go down into the specs, the four iron is 19 degrees. So they're very, very strongly lofted. A lot of tungsten weighting packed into these very low and back CG. So what, what I'm expecting is that that will just balance out in terms of the launch, in terms of, the, um, in terms of that, uh, that loft. It's early morning. Right, it's early morning, it's a bit cold, a bit of a warm up already done, but I'll hit some balls and uh, I've already hit some balls to warm up, but I'll give you my immediate sort of thoughts in terms of uh, how it feels. Bit of a different camera action, uh, camera position. We've got someone in, uh, in Little Bay 1, which uh, my camera normally sits in front of. So um, yeah, apologies for that, you're seeing my back. Well, look, like I said, I've hit balls off camera. So um, really positive um, is the feel. I think it's got, well, let's say, I'll rephrase that, not really positive. It's very similar to that of the 790 to me. Um, 
the perhaps sound now is just that little bit softer and more muted, which would be a positive because it's an issue that I had with the P790s, although the feel was very good, that sound was just a little bit sharp. So it is more muted on this 790. Um, in terms of the ball, 28 and a half degrees loft, and I'll hit one more ball while I'm talking. Well, my eyes are going that way and my head is, and you can see that the ball is literally, and we'll see it from the, um, no doubt from the data in terms of launch angle. Everyone gets obsessed with strongly lofted irons, but what defies loft is the actual ball flight and launch angle. And we'll see that at the end, I don't know, but the ball is literally firing into orbit. It is, it seems to be a club that is very easy to launch and get up and out there. I'm not seeing, um, again, overly long distances. Um, I'm seeing a ball go nice and high, um, fairly consistent numbers, but I'm not seeing anything in terms of, unless, again, it's pretty cold out there this morning, changing weather in the UK, um, but I'm not seeing anything that's sort of flying past distances that I would expect to see for a 20 and a half degree uh, seven iron. If I'm honest with you, is there any more for me to say on this one? I think let me carry on it in some golf balls. Let me collect data. Let's go through it. Let's see what we're paying for, what we're paying the catch again. What is packed into this club that's going to come out in performance that's going to make me want to pay top dollar for this golf club? Right, so I think this review is uh, fairly straightforward, to be honest with you, and uh, we can get it done uh, fairly quick. There's no point in wasting time waffling on. Numbers up on screen for you now, and uh, let's have a look. Um, so, First thing to note, I think, hang on, let's come back before we go into numbers. Uh, it is a cold morning. I've took a little bit uh, longer than normal to warm up. My swing speed is noticeably two or three mile an hour uh, down. And believe me, uh, it's not to make excuses. I just want to make sure that we clear that up because I'll tell you why and how that impacts uh, very, very shortly because I've done something else. Um, but it's important to note that's probably... Uh, so first of all, club head speed 79.4 on average. I'm normally in around the 82. So let's bear that in mind. Uh, 118 ball speed, five and a half thousand spin, great spin number and great consistency of spin over an iron that is off at 28 and a half degrees. Um, 167 call it carry distance, very consistent in terms of the carry distance as well. That was another good thing, uh, very much a positive. There was no sort of uh, flyer balls out there and, and inconsistencies, it was tightly grouped. 16.6 uh, in terms of launch and 88 peak height and again, I said this to you, that ball is going up there. So those people that are obsessed with um, strong lofts means, uh, you know, equivalent to an old five iron, four iron, or whatever it is that we refer to. There is technology that means there is a balance to be struck and without doubt it's demonstrated yet again there where launch angle and peak height defy that of launch. But like I said, people want to get obsessed with that, that uh, with loft, I mean. Um, but if people want to get obsessed with that, that's up to them. Um, Overall performance of the club, and, and, and I say about the, uh, I, I made reference to the uh, swing speed because it wasn't as long as I expected it to be, and it wasn't as long clearly when I was looking out there into the driving range, and uh, like I said, I was expecting it, so don't get me wrong, it's more than adequate for a 7 iron, 166 yards, wherever the average was, but 28 and a half degrees of loft, I was expecting the ball to go out there quite a bit further, and maybe that's a positive. Maybe, like I said, that balance between uh, loft and launch and the spin number is a great combination because really, like I said, we're not looking for seven irons to go uh, 180, 190 yards. So that combination is great, but every other review that I've seen has referenced how far these things go. I didn't really find that, but like I said, there was a little bit of a slower swing speed. I hit at the end there, and that's why, uh, based on today's swing, because like I said, I always have variables as an average golfer, as we all do, that's the purpose and point, I think, of my channel. Uh, when I turn up tomorrow, I might be swinging back at 82 again, but like I said, that's what you get with me. But I then went into the P790 uh, 2019 model, and I hit just three balls, uh, and again, I'm just gonna throw those numbers up as a comparison for you now. Same swing speed, and that's why I said I'm referencing it. 79.5 was the average between the three shots. 117 ball speed, which was uh, literally one mile an hour down in terms of ball speed. 62 spin, so fantastic spin number. 163 carry. Three balls are hit were 162, 164, 162, and launching at 17. Right, why did I throw those three in? Well, the summary is this really, I'm gonna keep it very brief. I don't really understand why um, TaylorMade have brought the iron out. I don't see its purpose, I don't see where it fits. I, I'm, I'm a bit confused. 
if I'm honest with you, I, since the product launched, I haven't heard a great deal about it at all. And it launched, I think, uh, early November. Um, so I just don't know where it sits. I don't know its purpose. And I said the catch, and the catch is the money. I think it's about 350 quid an iron. And as I always say, I don't care how people spend their money, so I'm not going to start changing my tune for a tailor-made product. Um, but there's got to be a justifiable reason, and I can't see it because to me, the P790, that goes far to say it's a better club. Overall package of a club, if you want, if that's the profile you're looking at, I think the standard P790 is a better club. So for me, the club's fine, it's okay, but I don't understand its purpose. I don't understand why really TaylorMade have introduced it, and uh, I can't see. Um, the market for it. I can't see who wants that iron when the P790 already exists. Uh, a, and I get a really, really good P790. Like I said, that's what I'm saying. They've got a great product here. What did that achieve by bringing it out? I can't really see it. Anyway, you know how you get it from me. It's straightforward, it's honest, and uh, I try to make sense of the evaluation. So I hope I've managed to do that again today. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. I'm gonna get a cup of coffee. If I turn the camera around, it's gone, literally, the fog has fell, my hands are freezing, my swing speed is down, and clearly, I'm getting too old for all this. <laughs>